I've been telling Jerry about this message, and I've probably bitten off more than I can chew because there's a lot to it. But I'll do my best to get through it if you'll listen quickly and retain what you listen to. I'll try to talk quickly and we'll get through it. Why worry when you can pray? Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 through 7. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you're considerate in all you do. Remember the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead of pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and mind as you live in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Father, I ask for your insight this morning, for your help us, Lord, as we look at your word this morning and the thought of putting our trust in you. Guide us and direct us, we pray. Amen. Anxiety, I think, is a normal <clears throat> emotion. If there's anyone here this morning that doesn't have any anxiety, maybe you can share with us, but I think everybody has a little anxiety. We all feel it. But a, someone said a little anxiety is good for us. It keeps us sharp and on our toes. When genuine concern crosses the line and becomes worry, that is, when we let our anxiety cross the line of distrusting God, then we're in trouble. In other words, when we take a concern out of God's hands and puts it, put it in our hands, we really are doing nothing good because God is in charge. My younger sister and I had fun from time to time, even now, talking about our precious mother, and we loved her to death, and she loved us. Mother had a favorite expression, don't worry about it. Just don't worry about it. And the funny thing is, she worried about everything. But she was quick to tell us, don't worry about it. There's an occasion when I was going down for a visit with the family, and I said, now, Mother, make me a honeydew list, and when I get there, I'll get it fixed. Just this and that and the other. And she said, okay. And I got there, and I started doing the honeydew list, and she said, Daryl, don't worry about that. Come sit down and visit. She was, she was comical in her, don't worry about it. Someone wrote this, some people worry about the past, some worry about the present, some worry about the future. Some people just like to worry. Think about that. Research tells us that 85% of the things that we worry about never happen. We're anxious about a lot of things and most of the stuff that we are concerned about and worry about never happen, uh, you know. Um, and there is a prescription that I want to give us this morning when it comes to our anxieties. And I hope it helps you. It has me. This message has been setting figuratively speaking, on the back burner for three weeks now. But a prescription of five things, at least five things, but there's more. But let's talk about the first thing is a choice that we make. Choose to rejoice rather than worry. That's what Philippians chapter 4 says. Always be full of joy 
in the Lord. I say again, rejoice. Is rejoice better than worrying? I'm going to let you answer that. It's a whole lot better than that. In Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 through 19, and I ran across this and I wanted to share it with you. Even though the fig trees have no blossoms and there are no grapes on the vines, even though the olive crop fails and the fields lie empty and barren, even though the flocks die in the fields and the cattle barns are empty, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the Lord of my salvation. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes me as sure-footed as a deer also to tread upon the heights. Make a choice to rejoice instead of worrying. Now, the pressures that we have in these days, I'm well aware of. Pressures in the world, world scene, the pressures of life, the pressures of family, things that just pile in and pile in. Let me just say this to you. I believe the devil wants to load you up so much in a mental way that you get to the place where you distrust God and you worry about things. There's an illustration from Acts chapter 16. Paul and Silas were in prison. I mean, it, as we are studying Philippians, we know that Paul was in prison. So I've repeated this several times. He was in prison. But in Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas both were in prison. And instead of worrying about things, the scripture says they were praying and singing hymns to God. Isn't that something? Remember, they're on the mission field. Other prisoners are listening. Suddenly there was a huge earthquake and the prison was shaken at its foundation and all the doors immediately flew open. The chairs, the chains and every prisoner fell off. The blood on their backs probably wasn't dried yet. They'd been beaten. But they were singing and rejoicing. And God intervened for them because they, cho they chose to rejoice in God rather than their problems, okay? So when anxiety is stalking, two things we can do. We can pray about it. And we can sing songs. God gives us some really good songs. Some of them are new. I was commenting some time ago, I don't like the new contemporary gospel songs. Then somebody said to me, but Brother Darrell, they might help the younger generation find God. And I thought, let them sing. If that's what it takes, let them sing. For me, I'll go back to the old time gospel songs. Amen. You may not like them, but I do. Proverbs, Solomon wrote in Proverbs chapter 15, 15, for the despondent every day brings trouble for the happy heart. Life is a constant feast. If we let worry and anxiety overwhelm us, we forget that God is in charge and we want to do it ourselves. Just let me have this, God. And I'm here to tell you, and I'll confess this, I have to work on this all the time. Saying, Lord, I can't do anything about it. The word came that we had a water problem in the church parking lot out here. It's on our side of the meter, so I was really worried. And we finally got to the shutoff, and that meter was just a whirling, going and going and going and going. And the devil said, boy, you need to do something now. You need to, and, and I, so I called around, couldn't get anybody. And, and the anxiety built up and built up. And finally the Lord said, what are you worried about? I'm in charge of this. No, it, it'll be off after church. And, you know, we've got, you can use the restrooms. 
God is going to provide somebody to dig that ditch and fix that pipe. And I'm just trusting the Lord to do that. But I'm just telling you, the anxiety set in on me, and I had to pray about it. So choose to rejoice. Number two, remember that the Lord is near when we're going through the situations that we can't change. Now, let me just say this. If you can change a situation yourself, God says, go, go to it. But mostly what we are anxious about and worry about is things that we can't do anything about, and we have to trust God to fix them. And we need to remember that the Lord is near. When we feel anxious, fearful, and depressed, God may seem like he's a million miles away, but I want to tell you something this morning. God is right there by your side. Oh, he may not knock you down with a lightning bolt and let you know he's there, but the Bible promises that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. So what does that mean to you? He'll be there. Psalms 15, 15. Oh, I read that, didn't I? Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. God is with us. Don't worry, number three. Don't worry about anything. Paul puts it like that. Trust God. Let him take control of it. That's a little unrealistic, isn't it? But folks, when we get our mindset that God is in charge, it's really not. We pray about something because we're concerned about it. But when concern is taken over by our thinking that I've got to do something about this, then we take it out of God's hands, and that's when we mess up. It's hard to do. Paul said, pray about everything. Pray about it. Let God have it. The psalmist got in trouble various times in chapter 55, 1 and 2. He said, God, listen to my prayer, O God. Don't ignore my cry for help. Please listen and answer me, for I am overwhelmed with my troubles. Can you find a place in the Bible where God failed David? It's always the other way around. David always failed God. But every time David repented and he came back and time, oh man, I just, ooh. I did an online study last week about David and Saul. And I'm telling you, there's a lot to it. They lived in a world of a war. But everywhere, when David called with all, all sincerity and said, Lord, I've got things that I can't do anything about. Would you please help me? The Lord always answered his prayer. Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, Give all your worries and cares to God, listen, for he cares for you. He's there. The songwriter puts it like this, What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Now listen, oh, what peace we often forfeit because we want to take it ourselves. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Folks, I'm telling you, through a lifetime experiences, I found out that's true. When I get anxious and get overwhelmed, and we've all been there. We're all still going through it, and we have to check ourselves and say, you need to remember, you're not in charge of this department, God is. We need to remember God's made some promises. Verse 7 of Philippians 4, then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. When? When we surrender to his will, he'll give you peace. Peace. I may not finish all of this this morning, but some years ago, one of those dreaded phone calls come, came. Our eldest son said, Mother and Dad, Allie <coughs> is in serious trouble. 
very concerned that she might not make it. We hung up the phone and we went to prayer. We scheduled a plane that we could go out and be with our granddaughter and her family. Somewhere over the Colorado mountains, deep conversation with the Lord. About 10 o'clock in the morning, the Lord said, and you can sneer at this if you want to, we're very concerned. We're kind of worrying as a human being. And I said, Lord, would you please take this concern that we have and touch Allie? And I had such a peace come over me about Allie. And God assured me that she was going to be okay. We landed in Boise. My son picked us up. We went to the hospital. Lorana's parents were there. We came in. As we was walking in the hospital with my eldest son, I said, Alan, how is she? She said, Dad. You won't believe it. God has healed her. I said, Alan, when did that happen? He said, about 10 o'clock. You can't tell me God's not alive and well. And that he's concerned about our conditions. And that doesn't always work out that way. We know God's will. It goes in various directions. But. I thought about Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, and he will keep you in perfect peace. All who trust in you, all those thoughts are fixed on you. All his thoughts are fixed on you. John 14, 27, Jesus said, I'm leaving with you a gift, a peace of mind, when we surrender to his divine will. John 16, 33 says, I have told you all this so that you have peace in me. That's where it is, folks, when we place our trust in Jesus Christ to take care of us. Then Matthew, Jesus said this, this is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food or drink or enough clothes to wear, life isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you that more valuable than they are? Folks, grab a hold of that promise. Oh, we, we're human enough that we'll want. But we need to remember when we get into a place of anxiety and we just need to say, Lord, you just take this over. And if it's your will that our loved one go on to heaven, so be it. The hymn writer said, why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home? Jesus is my portion. A constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches over me. Anxiety, worry, or like, like sitting in a rocking chair. You're moving, but you're not going anywhere. Charles Spurgeon wrote this, Our anxiety doesn't empty tomorrow of its sorrows, but only empties today of its strengths. How true that is. Eugene Peterson in the Message Bible from Matthew 6, 28 said this, Steep your life in God's reality, God's initiative, and God's provisions. Don't worry about missing out. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. Isn't that good? 
Then he goes on to say, it all matters. It's all a matter of perspectives. Jesus says to actively, intensely search out God's kingdom and righteousness, and God will provide what you need to accomplish at that time. So don't worry about tomorrow. Matthew 6.34 again. Don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Place your hand in the hand of the man who calmed the waters. Just, you remember that old song? Just place your hand. Say, Lord, I can't do this. It's up to you. Well, there's some other things that I could cover this morning, but let me close with this thought. If we remember the divine will of God <clears throat> is at stake. When we say, Lord, I have these burdens that I can't carry by myself, and I want your will to be done, and I can trust you. When Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane, kneeling there in prayer alone, you talk about anxiety that could set in. You say, well, he was divine. He was human, too. You can't tell me that he didn't have some anxieties. But when he said this, Father, not my will, but your will be done. I'm confident that a peace settled over him. And from there, he went to the cross with the assurance that God was doing what he wanted to do. Amen. So take your burdens to the Lord, as the songwriter said, and leave them there. And if you're over anxious and if you're worrying too much, pray about asking God to let you surrender your will to do his will. Sing songs that blesses your heart. I don't care if they're contemporary or what we call traditional music, but surrender to God's will. I have to work on it. I'm being honest, I do. I have to work on it. Three days in the hospital lying there. What if the doctor finds this? Or what if the doctor, I mean, the devil came in and said, what ifs? He's got a bunch of them. He's got a bunch of what is. And then I said to him, but what if God has a different plan? Your life is valuable to God. So surrender to his divine will and everything will work out. Amen. Let's stand together. <clears throat> surrender our will to your will, O oh Lord, this morning. Help us, Lord, just to give it to you. Help us to do what we can do ourselves. But yet, Lord, things that we can't do, things that we can't change, let's help us to surrender to your divine will. Would you guide and direct us through this week, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.